Hi, it's Lindley Oz, and welcome to another episode of Truth Hunters, because it's all about the truth and nothing but the truth of God's Word, exposing the deceptions and the sour of the enemy, and being set free from the bondage of sin, and the fruit of sin, and giving life to the new, to the fruit of righteousness. Amen. It is a nice chilly fall evening. I've got an insulated cup tonight, so my coffee doesn't get cold. And we're gonna have an interesting discussion about several different things. One of them is, what does it really mean to be the salt of the earth? Because I did some in-depth research and I found something very, very interesting that I want to share with you. Also, what does it mean to be totally led by the love of Jesus Christ and to suffer for righteousness sake and so much more quite a few different topics we're going to take a look at the book of matthew and we're going to start with chapter five so it's going to be a very very enlightening discussion about the truth of god's word and how you can truly be a follower and a disciple of jesus christ in these end times which is very important so I hope so far all of you have had a wonderful, wonderful week in Christ. Like I said, it's pretty chilly out here tonight. I have a thermal insulated shirt on. I've got another shirt and I've got a fleece liner type jacket on plus this jacket you see here. So I'm completely bundled up and I feel pretty comfortable right now. So maybe you're on your couch all cozy inside of a warm blanket watching this show and it's all chilly outside where you're at maybe not i don't know but whatever you're doing i hope that you're hungering after the truth of god's word we're going to learn the truth of god's word as it was meant to be taught we're going to rise above the deceptions that we have been taught in this hour because it is so important more than ever that we know the absolute truth and that we are not part of any of the world or the apostasy. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 9. We're going to look at Matthew 5, 9 through 12. And we're going to find out what Jesus is actually trying to tell us. You'll notice oftentimes when Jesus is speaking to his disciples, he is also speaking of future events, warning them of future events. And that's because he's also speaking to us today. He's giving us a message today. And it's important that we understand the truth of his message. So like I said, we're going to start with verse 9. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So first he starts off saying blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Okay, so as disciples and followers of Jesus Christ, we are to be peacemakers. That means we don't partake in the bickering, the arguing, the debating, and the hatred that we see going on in the world or among the apostates. No, we are peacemakers. You cannot be a peacemaker and at the same time partake and the bickering and the arguing and so forth and so on that you see taking place in the world. I know that many people are deceived by the fact that, well, it's for a good cause. It doesn't matter. The Bible tells us that we are peacemakers. But then it goes on to say, Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So if you're going to be a peacemaker in this hour, you're also going to be persecuted for righteousness sake, but yours will be the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. 
So when you're standing on the truth of God's word and you're representing Jesus Christ in a wicked, corrupt world, and you are persecuted for it, insulted, and people rail at you and say all sorts of evil about you, Jesus said, blessed are you. But yet many of us see this as a curse. We complain about it. We get upset about it. We get angry about it. But Jesus himself said, blessed are you. You are sons of God. You are of the kingdom of heaven. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So it doesn't say grumble and complain and come to me and say, what have I done? Oh, why are you doing this to me, Lord? Doesn't say that. Did you hear that? It says, rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. I tell you this, my friends, because this is the very words of Jesus Christ. The hour of persecution is here and this hour of darkness and persecution will intensify and you need to know what Jesus expects of us as followers of his. We need to be tuned in to the truth of his word. If we're going to tell people that we're followers of Jesus Christ or we're Christians or we are disciples of Jesus, then we better make sure we know exactly who Jesus is and what he expects of us because Jesus is our ultimate example. There are other examples in the Bible, but Jesus ultimately is our example. Now we're going to look at Matthew 5, 13, and it's about the salt of the earth. And I did some research on this this weekend, and it's amazing what I found. And I want to share it with you because it's important. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So let me share with you what I found. First of all, salt was used to sprinkle on the sacrifices offered to God. It represented a covenant. Okay, that's what it meant. So it represented a covenant. And it was very, very important. So when a covenant was made between man and God, the salt on the sacrifice represented that. So what is Jesus saying here? He is saying you are the covenant on the earth. My covenant. What's that covenant? Our true heart change salvation in Jesus Christ. You are my covenant on the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless or if you break your covenant with me, how can it still be good? How can this covenant that you've made with me, if you go and break the covenant with me, how do you break this covenant with God? You begin to live in sin. You practice sin. You live in unrepentance, willful, blatant, intentional sinning. If you break your covenant with me, how then are you still truly mine? Well, it says, it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under foot by men. So you who are watching, if you are truly saved, truly born again, you are the covenant. You represent the covenant of Jesus Christ on this earth. But if you're going to return to a life of sin and you're going to live in the flesh, we all make mistakes, but we're talking about practicing sin, living in the flesh, then you're not truly saved because you're living in sin and therefore you're not good for anything but to be trampled underfoot by men. I have to tend to the fire, but next we're going to look at Matthew 6, 22 through 24, because I've always read the passage about how the eye is the lamp of the body 
And while I understood it, it just never sat with me. It was like, there has to be more to this. And so of course, me being me, I dug around and did a lot of research on it prayerfully. And I wanna share with you what I found out about that too. But I have to go tend to the fire real quick and I will be right back. Okay, so now I've added some more wood to the fire and we're gonna take a look, as I said, at Matthew 6, 22 through 24. It says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So let's take a look at that. First of all, what I learned about the eye, and you can contrast a verse here. Let's look at Matthew 7, 15 real quick. So if you'll turn to Matthew 7, 15, that would be great. Okay, so let's take a look at Matthew 7, verse 5 real quick, because it's going to give us a clue here. It's talking about judging others and removing the plank from your own eye. It says, you hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So then you will see clearly. It's talking about repent for your own sin first. Okay, whatever it is that you're doing in which you need to repent for, like some sin that you're practicing, repent and be righteous and holy first, then go to your brother, and then you can talk to him about his sin. But how can you sit there and talk to him about his sin when you've got some mess yourself that you need to clean up? It says, then you will see clearly. So now let's go back to 622. The eye is the lamp of the body, so then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. It's talking about if you are living in righteousness and not living in sin because you don't practice sin. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you don't practice sin. So if you're living in righteousness and holiness for God, then your eye is clear and you're full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Then it says, and this is the part that can be confusing to some people, if then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? And then it goes on in verse 24 to talk about exactly what the apostates do. They serve wealth. Okay, you got that? So the apostates serve wealth. That's the very last verse in that section. Verse 24. If you practice righteousness and you do not practice lawlessness or sin, or apostasy, your whole body will be full of light. If you practice darkness, your whole body will be full of darkness. However, if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? That's talking about an apostate, somebody who appears to be a Christian because they say they represent Jesus. Remember, Jesus warned his disciples, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, but don't believe them. In other words, many people will come and say, I'm a Christian, I represent Jesus, don't believe them. All right, this is talking about an apostate. The light in them is actually darkness. How great is the darkness? In other words, it's false light. It's not really light at all. And that darkness is even greater because they're deceiving people into thinking that they are a Christian or a representative of Jesus and they are twisting the truth of God's word and they are preaching an apostate false message which is happening in this very hour. You cannot serve God and wealth. Ah, these people serve the beast system. They serve the wealth of the world, the entire beast system. They don't serve God, they serve the flesh. Okay, do you get that? So, those of us listening to this message, we need to do everything we can to draw near to God and to know the truth 
and to begin to live in righteousness and holiness, a holy people, children of God, true disciples of Jesus Christ, and to not live in the flesh. So that being said, we're going to take a look and then we're going to talk. This is all the scripture reading I have now. We're going to look at Matthew 7, 13 and 14. It says, enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are few who find it. I think that's rather disturbing. I really do. Jesus himself tells us that the gate or the pathway to death or destruction is huge. Okay. But the gate to truth and righteousness, the gate to heaven, and only few will find it, is narrow. Do you know the overall majority of people believe some sort of an apostate message being taught today? Once saved, always saved. I've talked about that. Okay, the Bible tells us a different story. Okay, Jesus will never leave you, but you can walk away from him. Okay. So there's a lot of false messages being taught in this very hour that we're supposed to go out and fight for the world beast system, fight for the government, the left and the right and the right and the left and hate everybody and be angry and to stand up for the president or the leader of your nation that you believe in. No, the Bible simply tells us we are to pray for the leaders of this world. And in truth, in the Old Testament, God did not originally set up a king or for people to have kings. The people decided they wanted a king instead of God. And so God let them have what they wanted. Why? Because God made the end before the beginning and he saw that it would be to our own judgment and our own destruction. Because what do people do today? They exonerate a leader. They look for a leader. They fight. When in truth, the left and the right and the right and the left are all owned by the same entity. It is to create diversion, arguing, bickering, strife, hatred, opposing everything that Jesus Christ taught. Because you see, Jesus said the first and greatest commandment was to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. And the second was to love your neighbor as yourself. He also commanded that we love our enemies and that we pray for those who spitefully use us and persecute us. He also told us not to oppose a wicked person, but to offer them the other cheek. He also told us, unlike the Old Testament, which told us that if someone stole something from us, we were to go after them. We had every right to go after them and do whatever we had to do to get back what was taken from us. But Jesus said, no, not anymore. Under me, because I am the fulfillment of the law, I am your new commandments. I am your commander in chief. Instead, if somebody wants to take something from you, give them the other. Give them everything you've got. Because your worldly possessions don't matter. They are part of the flesh. They are part of this world. I'll take care of you. You just give it up. You can't take it with you to heaven. But the world beast system and the apostasy tells us to hold on to what you have. To kill people in defense. To do all of these unrighteous things. Everything that opposes Jesus. And they use Old Testament passages to prove it. That's what they do. Okay, the Old Testament is extremely important. I am a believer in that the whole entire word of God from Genesis to Revelation is alive. However, when it comes to the laws, we are under Jesus Christ. He is the law and he changed things. Jesus himself even came out and pointed out. He said, do you remember it was said, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I say to you, if a man even looks at a woman with lust, he has committed adultery in his heart. Do you remember it was said, et cetera, et cetera. But I say to you, if you have hatred in your heart, you have committed murder. 
So you see, Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament laws, and he is now under the new covenant, our law. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments, or if you love me, obey me. But many of us have this loose belief that we can do whatever we want and that our salvation is merely an insurance policy. That's not what the Bible says. And it's time for us to rise above this old apostate teaching or teachings, I should say, that have brainwashed us and get into the truth of God's word and know it. And it's very important because you see we're in the final hour and it's important for us if we're going to say we are disciples of Jesus, we're followers of Jesus, we're a Christian, then we have to uphold and defend the truth of God's word. I can't tell you how many YouTube videos I see of very well-known YouTubers putting out apostate messages misleading people out of ignorance. They think they're speaking the truth. I will tell you what, those people are going to be more accountable at the day of judgment for misleading all these people than the average person is. It is important for those of us who are leading the sheep to teach the truth and to make sure we know that's the truth and to research it and pray about it and to understand it and to rightly divide the word of God. But many people aren't doing that. And many people are hearing these apostate teachings being misled and corrupted in their minds by these false teachings. And they can't tell the difference. And they go and they defend it. And they live by it. And they're being lied to straight to hell is what's happening. And if you're listening to this video, I can't urge you enough that it's time for you to quit being spoon fed and to take the bull by the horn and to pray and to get into God's word and do word studies, cross referencing and everything that you can and pray, 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 pray and ask for discernment, wisdom and understanding and know the truth. Please, I cannot tell you, don't even take my word for it. I don't want you to take anyone's word for it. I want you to know it for yourself because the great deception has been here. It's going to get worse and you need to know what is the truth so that you will know what to do. I hear many people who are already deceived saying a true Christian can't be deceived. A true Christian can't be deceived. That's so not true. Let me tell you simply how the Bible is to us. When Jesus warned of deception, he was talking to his disciples. We are his disciples. He's speaking to us. The letters of warning were written to the churches. We are the church. A true Christian can be deceived if a true Christian doesn't get into the truth of God's word prayerfully and know it forwards and backwards. And yes, you could even possibly be deceived if you don't do what I'm telling you to do into anything, including worshiping the beast or taking the mark of the beast. Yes, but I hear many people saying, oh, we can't be deceived. How do you know? That's not what the Bible says. We're looking for something that we've been taught. Sci-fi, Christianity could be the mark and we don't know. And you at best use your discernment and you get discernment by being close to the Lord, being in his spirit getting into his word, getting into your prayer closet continuously, fighting the fight the way God has told you to fight. So many Christians are fighting in the flesh. In fact, the overall majority of Christians are fighting in the flesh, fighting for this corrupt world beast system who is run by the devil because God gave him dominion and authority over this world system until Jesus comes back. They're pouring their heart and their soul and their energy into fighting for what belongs to the devil and fighting for what will be destroyed. And Jesus will come back and rebuild everything. He will rebuild it. He will build the kingdom of heaven on this earth. So we do fight, but we don't fight in the flesh and we don't fight at all the way the devil wants us to fight. Even if it looks good, sounds good, makes you feel good, makes you feel like you're making a difference. You're not, not if you're following Jesus and you're doing it an opposite of what God's word tells you to do. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 tells you clearly how you are supposed to fight. It tells us our weapons. 
are not of this world, but they are mighty in God for pulling down of strongholds. It tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but why are we fighting flesh and blood then? The Bible tells us we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our battle is against the kingdom of hell on this earth. And so here's what our weapons are. But we aren't doing that. Instead, we want to feel like we're making a difference. So I'm going to go do this and do that. And it's all for a good cause and make a difference. Okay, if that makes you feel good. But being a follower of Jesus isn't about making ourselves feel good. It does not matter. If you want me to be completely honest, when you make the commitment to give your life to Jesus Christ, many people are misled into saying the gift of salvation is free. Well, in one sense it is. However, there is something that is required of you upon receiving that free gift of salvation, your life. You must give your life in return. That means it's no longer your life to do with what you want or to do how you want. True salvation is not just lip service. True salvation is heart service and you confess it with your lips. True salvation means you love Jesus Christ. You love God. You want to serve him. You want to sacrifice everything in your life to serve him. That's what true salvation is. But many of us are still holding on to our lives and owning our lives. And that is not truly being saved. That is living in the flesh. So to be a follower of Jesus, a representative of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus, you must Put to death the flesh and the ways of the flesh. You must renew your mind with God's word. And you must remember that even though we're in this world and we're in a body of flesh, our flesh no longer rules in us. We walk in the spirit, the Holy Spirit. We're led by the spirit. We're not led by the desires of the flesh anymore. And when we're not led by the desires of the flesh any longer, that means we don't fight for the world things the way the world fights. We fight with the spirit and we fight in the spirit because our battle is not against the flesh. All you're doing is fighting the symptoms of the disease. God wants us to go deeper. He wants us to go to the root of the disease, which is the kingdom of hell, not the symptoms, not the illness, but the root cause of the illness and the symptoms. Why can't we understand that? Why? Because you're thinking with a carnal, fleshly mind. You're not thinking with the mind of the Spirit because you don't truly know the truth of God's Word. So you're not thinking in the spiritual mind. You're thinking with the mind of the flesh. You're seeing with bad eyes. You're seeing with the eyes of the flesh. You ought to be living in righteousness and holiness and see things with the eyes of the Spirit. And then you will have the light of God within you fully. And don't even partake in a false light, because that false light, which is saying you're a follower of Jesus, when you're really following, practicing, and teaching corruption and deception, that darkness is even darker and more wicked. So you see, guys, I can't be more clear enough the hour is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is upon us. But according to the Bible, some very dark things have to happen first. And we have to be able to withstand it in faith and in prayer. And we have to trust the Lord. Let me just tell you this. I'm going to tell you something. I want you to really think about this. Because it might help your anxiety. We all have an appointed time. Okay. We all have an appointed time. If it is your time to go, no matter what you do, nothing will prevent that appointed time unless God changes his mind for some reason. Okay. I can assure you that if it's your appointed time, and you raise the sword to kill someone, God's definitely not going to be changing his mind because it says, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. It also tells us in the book of Revelation, and I know I'm going to misquote it, so I'll put it on the screen, 
but it also tells us that everybody who lives by the sword dies by the sword. If it is not your appointed time, I don't care if somebody's standing there with a gun aimed at your face and they're about to blow your brains out. If it is not your appointed time, God will not let it happen. You have more of a chance if you stand there and bless the Lord and witness to that person at that very last moment. Witness the truth of Jesus Christ. It doesn't show in the Bible Jesus flailing about and fighting, and he's our example. How are we so misled when the Bible tells us Jesus is our example? It tells us how being persecuted is a wonderful thing for the Lord. It tells us to be joyous and to give him praise. But our minds are so in the flesh that we cannot comprehend even what the Bible clearly tells us. And we want to believe the false teachings because they're so sugar-coated. They're so much easier to hear. So if it is your time, you can flail about and do whatever you want. Nothing will prevent it. If it is not your time, even if a person has cold steel pressed against your cheek, God will not allow it to happen. This is the faith you must have in the Lord. We all eventually, and you need to remember this, all of us, if the Lord doesn't come back soon or whatever, someday we are appointed to death. That's part of this life that we have in this body of flesh. This body of flesh is corruptible. It's made of the earth. So don't put your faith in your life on this earth or in your flesh. Put your faith in the Lord your God. I understand that there are so many things we face that are so hard, so difficult, decisions we're, that we're forced to make, things that we have to do, and we all make mistakes because of this body of flesh that our spirit lives in. We make mistakes, and if we're truly walking with the Lord, we feel very convicted for our mistakes. The last thing we ever want to do as true followers of Jesus is intentionally grieve the Holy Spirit, intentionally sin, willfully making those mistakes. Okay, but many of us are doing that. Many of us, because of all these watered-down apostate teachings, are living in the flesh and we think it's okay. It's no big deal because we have been fed this apostate hypergrace message. We've drank the Kool-Aid of the apostasy and we're brainwashed to believe this in so much that when we read the truth, we are blinded and cannot even see the truth before our very eyes. I do not come here in this hour to give you a popular message or to make friends or to receive a pat on the back. I come here in this hour to tell you the truth because the day of the Lord is at hand and because dark hours are before us. A darkness that no one has ever witnessed. A darkness unlike any other. And so many of you are like, oh, I can withstand anything. I'll do it. No big deal to me. I stand for Jesus. That's great. But if that's true, why are you not preparing yourself spiritually? Why are you not coming out of sin? Why are you full of pride? Why are you not believing the truth of God's word? You're going to be in for a big surprise. Jesus himself said he did not come to bring peace, but to set a mother against her daughter, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, a father against a son, and so on and so forth. Why? Because the truth of God's word is not an easy pill to swallow. It's hard for many of us. And many of us are so caught up in the flesh, we can't even begin to understand it or make sense of it. We can't understand because here we are in this body of flesh, so we can't comprehend. 
Our citizenship is no longer part of this world. We are foreigners, strangers, aliens in a, in a strange land. We're a peculiar people. We're not a popular people. We're a peaceful people, but we are bold in that we speak the truth. We are gentle as doves, and we are as wise as serpents. We are bold as a lion. We speak the truth. I don't preach the wishy-washy, watered-down message of love either. Okay, love is truth. There is a very corrupt love message. Love your enemy straight to hell today. Uh Uh-uh. That's not loving somebody. Lying to people and deceiving them is never an act of love, especially lying about things that will send them to hell. We do what we do out of a spirit of love, the very love of Jesus Christ. But we speak the truth boldly and we keep speaking the truth. Even in the face of death and persecution, we speak the truth. But you cannot speak the truth if you do not know the truth and you cannot be set free if you do not know the truth because then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The road is rough ahead, my friends. It is truly rough. Many of you are driving down that road because right now it's a little bumpy and you're driving in an old beater car, okay? And that old beater car is taking the bumps, eh, somewhat okay, it's not the best. But let me tell you, your old beater car just here a few miles down the road is gonna fall apart as you're sitting in it and it's going to break down on you. And then you're gonna be stuck in the middle of nowhere and you're gonna be stuck in the middle of all hell and chaos and destruction and you're not gonna know what to do. That is what lies ahead for you. If you do not take this message seriously and you do not take the word of God seriously, that's what this message is about. Many of us aren't taking our salvation seriously. Stop looking at your salvation as an insurance policy and look at it as a life, a life decision a heart change, a mind change, a life change, everything. That is the way you must look at it. You must feel it, not just look at it, but feel it and live it. Let it be real because it's very real. And that's all you're going to have here soon. And if you don't know the truth and you're not strong in the faith, as a result of spending time in the truth and in prayer, You will fall and you will not get back up. The darkness will be darkness to you and in that darkness there will be no light to you. You will see no way out. But for those of us who are prepared spiritually, who have been in the truth of God's word and spent time in prayer with him and who have decided and chosen to take our salvation seriously and to walk forward boldly, being as gentle as doves, as wise as a serpent, and loving our enemies and praying for our enemies and not giving in to the hatred and the rebellion that we see taking place in the world. We will see the light in the darkest hour. We will stand and we shall not fall. If we trip and stumble, we will regain our balance. And if any of us fall, it will only be but for a moment and we will rise back up. Our strength and our shield shall be the Lord our God and our faith in the word of truth and the peace and the love and the joy that we have because we trust in the Lord and we will have supernatural joy and strength and people will look upon us in awe and wonder. How do these people have this? How? And many will want to have what we have. And you see, there will be many people suffering who will want to have what we have. And they will ask us, how do I have that? And they will long for it and desire it. But they can't do that if you're not living for the Lord because they won't see it. What kind of an example are we if we're sitting around groaning and grumbling and complaining and speaking doubt and unbelief and, oh, woe is me. And 
looking just like the rest of the world and their hatred and anger and they're fighting for the left and the right and what politician's gonna save this nation? What leader, what king is going to save us now? Who's the best candidate to bring us up from the dirt? No one. The only one who can save us now is Jesus Christ. And if you're ready to truly repent and walk forward and move forward in the spirit of truth, and to forget this world and forget this world beast system and the politics thereof and to march forward in truth and a spirit of love and a spirit of faith and put on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation and take up the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and there's other parts of your armor too go read it in ephesians 6 10 through 20. This will be the mighty end times warrior. And Jesus Christ is our true leader. Not Joe Biden, not Donald Trump, not anybody else, but Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I'm tired of seeing Christians or people who say they're Christians giving all the glory to a leader, saying this is all because of him. They are trying to keep him out whatever come on people rise above these things in your spiritual mind look at the real deal this isn't because of a human this is because of sin and unrighteousness this is because judgment begins in the house of god this is because god is bringing judgment upon this world for its sin and unrighteousness and this is also because god is bringing justice to his people over the many generations even until now and who will live who have been treated unjustly who have suffered for righteousness sake and we as his people ought to be standing up proclaiming the name of jesus and giving glory to god what do they do in the book of revelation all the creatures and the people who are around the throne of God, every time judgment is unleashed on the earth, every time wrath is unleashed on the earth, they're giving praises and glory and singing to the Lord, making joyful sounds and music before the throne of God. Isn't that a picture of what we ought to be doing? No, but many of us are caught up in the world beast system and the politics and the left and the right and all the things that don't mean a hill of beans a difference why because we're not citizens of this world anymore why because the devil has dominion of the kingdom of this world why because jesus is coming back to rebuild it why because it's all going to be destroyed and we're supposed to be fighting it according to ephesians 6 10 through 20 not picketing on the streets not fighting it in the flesh but fighting it in the spirit of truth but many of us can't see this or accept it talking to people about this for me oftentimes is like talking to a wall a brick wall you can't make sense the words just bounce off and echo back at me i can't open the eyes of some of these people but the bible does say that god will send a strong delusion so that they would believe a lie and that's what we're seeing that strong delusion is here. They are believing a lie. Don't be part of that. Come out from under it. Get the heck out of Babylon. Spiritual Babylon. Get out of Babylon while there is still time. Repent. Come out. Because Babylon is going to burn smoke and ashes and fire and the smoldering. Get out of it. Babylon is a place of hell, a place of the flesh get out of Babylon repent renew your mind set your mind on the things above not on the things of this earth does God's Word not tell us this but many of us have our minds fixed on the things of this earth I speak truth to you have your mind fixed on the things of Jesus Christ and obey him and love him by doing so he is our high commander he is our law he is the truth he is the light he is our leader he is our savior nobody else god bless you this video has gotten long and i apologize to you for that let's say a prayer 
Many of us need to be praying more. We need prayer. We need God to open our eyes. We need God to unclog our ears. So let's say a prayer. Before I pray, I just want to remind you to check your subscription. Many people are unsubscribed from my channel. So check it. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to visit freedomnationnews.com, my website. Click on any article and the subscription form will be on the right hand side if from a computer and at the bottom if from a device or a phone. Subscribe to freedomnationnews.com. That way when I do a video and I'm behind on the last two, I will take care of that here in the next day or two. But that way you won't miss a video. There's no censorship from my website. Okay, you will get every notification. I don't overpost. I don't send out ads. So don't worry about that. Also, make sure you download the free app for the free show on Truth Hunters. It's the Truth Hunters app. It's available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku, and there's a free app for any Android or Apple device. Make sure that you pray for this ministry. Pray for our enemies, the leaders. Pray for our sisters and brothers all over the world. Pray for our children. Many of us have children who are unsaved and they're beyond the age of accountability. Pray for our children. My heart aches. I have children that aren't truly saved and have totally walked away. So let's all remember our children to pray for them. Also, I am mostly 100% viewer supported. This is my full-time job, my full-time ministry. And if you're blessed by these videos, you can help me to continue bringing the truth to people all over the world by considering a financial gift. So if you feel led or moved of the Lord to sow into this ministry and to help keep me doing what I'm doing, you can do so via my PayPal or my PO box. The information is on the screen and beneath the video in the video description. And thank you to those of you who have been giving and thank you to all my people on Patreon. I appreciate you. God bless all of you. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this blessed time together. I just pray for the people, Lord. There are so many people out there broken and hurting. There's so many people out there lost. There's so many people deceived, brainwashed, Father. I just ask that you send your Holy Spirit to them, Lord, to minister the truth, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name that they would hear the truth and that you would open their eyes just like you made the blind man to see. I pray that you make these people to see. This is a blind, deaf, and dumb generation, Father, who has drank the Kool-Aid, Father, of the great apostasy, Lord. The hour is at hand. Time is short. It is late, Father. Please, Lord, move quickly to reach these people. Move quickly to reach our children, Father, our loved ones. Father, I also ask that you go to our enemies. Father, they, they have built stone around their heart to protect themselves. I pray that you chisel through that stone, Father, and get in there and move them somehow, some way, Lord, that would convict them and bring them to repentance in Jesus Christ, and they would come to Jesus as their Lord and Savior before it's too late. It is not your will that anyone should perish in hell for all of eternity, that all would have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, we just bless your holy name. We magnify your holy name for you are the name above all names. You are the God above all these false gods of this world system, Lord. You are God alone and there is none like you throughout all the earth. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last and everything in between. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We adore you. We don't know what we would do without you, Lord. We live and move and have our being because of you. We wake up every day with breath in our lungs and a beat to our heart because you have allowed it. Oh, Lord, our God. We thank you and we praise you for another opportunity to get it right, another opportunity to repent, another opportunity to do away with this death and destruction of sin in our lives and the corruption thereof, and to turn to you and to get down on bended knee and repent, Father, and to truly walk forward in this life in you, in Jesus' mighty name. 
We thank you and we praise you, Heavenly Father. We will obey Jesus. We refuse to hate people. We refuse to hate our enemies. It is not our place, Father, to decide who we should pray for and who we should not pray for unless you come to us and confirm to us you don't want us praying for a particular person. We pray for our enemies. We pray for those who spitefully use us and persecute us. And not only do we pray for those people, but we love those people because we know those people don't have you. Lord, no one can do good who does not have you ultimately because they are children of the devil and the children of the devil will behave as the devil. So we must pray for them. We must rescue them in our prayers and in our love. From the fiery pit of death and darkness, Lord, many of them are hurting. The most hateful people have hurts. Lord, the most hateful people have deep, deep unresolved hurts. And the devil came to them in their weakest hour and their most hurting hour and deceived them and took advantage of them, Lord. And they need you, Heavenly Father. They need you, the name above all names. They need you, Heavenly Father. A lost and broken and corrupt, wicked world, Lord. There are so many people out there who are wicked and do wickedness. There are so many people out there hurting. They just need to know there's a God who loves them and will forgive them if they ask. They need to know there's a God who is gracious and mighty and loving, who wants more than nothing but to love them fully and bless them. They do not know there's a God who loves them. Lord, send your spirit to them that they might receive that love. We just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been such a blessing that you have joined me for this video message. I pray that it would convict your heart in order that you will repent and walk forward in righteousness and in truth and in the truth of God's word and that you will put to death the old man or woman of sin and you will allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and to teach you and that you can walk forward in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. In the flesh, it's not an easy walk why you can't walk forward in the spirit of truth in the flesh. You must walk in the spirit. It means commitment. It means devotion. It is a genuine life-changing decision. What are you waiting for? I'm not promising you a bed of roses because it's not easy doing the opposite of what your flesh wants to do. But with God, all things are possible. God bless all of you. Remember to get into the truth. Get into the truth of God's word for yourself prayerfully each and every day. You will begin to hunger after it. You will desire it deeply. You will yearn for it and have a passion for it. Get into the truth because there's no other way, my friends. Pray for wisdom, pray for understanding, pray for discernment. It is the only way. The only way is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free.